Hello everyone. As you know, usually for assignments, I wait for all submissions and then I go through them. But for today, I wanted to deal with this assignment because you will have your midterm uh, very soon. And that's why I wanted to go through it before facing your midterm. So uh, we need to see one example about uh, constructing a profile HMM. Uh, we already seen it uh, in the slides of the lectures, but uh, let's go through one other example because it's natural if you made uh, some errors in your uh, submission for this uh, weekly assignment. Uh, this is totally natural because you needed to see at least one more in order to get the idea much better. So let's go through it uh, in details. We construct the whole profile HMM together with its uh, probabilities. All right, uh, let's uh, go through the question uh, very carefully. Construct the profile HMM for the following DNA sequences. Consider 70% for the threshold of the conserved regions. Okay, so as I said, uh, we should give you this threshold so that we understand uh, which part I can consider as our conserved regions. So when we say 70%, I take a look at my sequences. How many of them do I have? I have uh, five sequences. It means that at least for four of them, I should have the same letter in order to consider it a conserved region. Uh, if I have three same letters, like we, I have three C's here, it means that 60% of the uh, places I can see that it has the same letter. So this is not a conserved region. So one by one. For the first column, for the first position here, I see that four of them uh, have the same letter G. So this is a conserved region. So if I want to show everything here, we have a starting point. So this is my starting point. And I reach the first conserved region. Let's call it M1, for example. Then for the next one, I see that we have three letters, not four letters, 60%. This is less than 70%. My threshold is 70%. If I change this one to 50%, then yes, this one was a conserved region, but not now. So in that scenario, I don't consider the conserved region. Next one here, I have four number of C's here. So I reach the second one. The second one happens in the third position, okay? So if I name it M2, it doesn't mean the second position. It means that this is the second conserved region. So first position, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, and ninth, okay. For the fourth one, again, I have four letters. Oh, this is good, this is a conserved region. So I have a third one here. Conserved regions make our job much easier. Whenever we don't have them, maybe it uh, indicates that we have insert one or uh, delete one. For the fifth, and sixth one, this is obvious that we don't have conserved regions here. And then for the next ones, we have here 100%. You see 100% of them are T, 80%, and 80%. So I have three more conserved regions here from my seventh position to ninth. So first position, third position, and fourth position, they were my conserve region. I have six all together. So for the last three ones, I will construct it, M4. And for the exam, I'm sure you will draw it much better. You can even draw it on a piece of paper and take a picture from it. Just make sure that 
the quality is good enough so that we can see uh, everything clearly. And at the end, we will have our end point here. So here is my start. You can uh, type start here. And here is my end. Whenever I don't put anything on the arc, it means that 100% I reach from S to M1 here. So this is my initial point. And if you write one, it's the same anyway. So let's go through them one by one. For the first position, obviously from a start to one, uh, the first position, uh, the probability is one because I don't have any other options. Let's go through the next one, M1 to M2. Let's see what happens here. Okay, here I have one inserted state. Why I don't call it a deleted state, not inserted one? Because deleted states happens inside the conserved region. Like here we have one. If inside the uh, conserved region you see a deleted one, then that's the case. Otherwise, this is a conserved region and we move on. So for the first position to the second position, now we want to consider these two positions. What happens? Uh, I have a region which is not a conserved region. And then I reach the conserved region here. OK? So well, what are the possibilities? What are the possibilities that I have? First of all, let me consider this inserted state. So we have an inserted state here. Let's call it I1. In how many cases I should go to I1? And in how many cases I go to M2 directly? So here in this case, uh, let's see what happens. From G, let me show you in this picture. From G to C, with no problem, I can go there, right? From A to C, what does it mean from the first position of the conserved region to the second one, M1 to M2, or P1 to P2, doesn't matter which title you choose. So in this scenario, in two cases, this is happening. And in three cases, I see that I have an inserted one. So what are the percentages? What are the relative frequencies? Here for inserted ones, I have 60% for the conserved regions that I go with no problem, then we have 40%. So here, the probability is 40%, here 60%. You see these two together, they are probability distribution. Okay, now we assume that we are talking about the inserted region once, and we want to see whether we have a self-loop or we go to M2 directly. Okay, if I'm in the second region, uh, in uh, the second position, I mean, then whenever I'm in the inserted ones, inserted place, because I don't need to do anything with S2 and S5 now, because they went directly to the next conserved region. For the inserted ones, in how many cases I have self loop? in how many cases I go directly to the next conserved region, which is the third position here. You see, in all of them, I go directly to the conserved region. I don't have any self-loop. Self-loop happens when, again, you will have an inserted uh, state. And instead of, instead of uh, constructing a new inserted uh, state, I can just have a self-loop. And inside the rules that I mentioned in the lecture, we should be careful about those limitations. I cannot have another inserted state. I should have a self-loop state. For, for deleted ones, it was not the case, as we mentioned in the lecture. Anyway, in this scenario, for all of the cases, I go directly to the conserved region. So here, 
I should have an arrow from here to here in all of the cases. You see, for the example I give you in the slides, I had self loop and I needed to distribute my uh, probabilities among them. But for 100% uh, percent of cases uh, from the inserted uh, state, I should reach the conservation. There's no other possibility. Okay, let's move on to the next position. Uh, now we are in the third position, which is a conserved region. Now, what is the next position? This is a conserved region again. So for 100% of cases with no problem, I can go from M2 to M3, okay? So you see these things uh, at the beginning may be confusing, but if you practice with them, I'm sure they make sense. But uh, don't rush, because if you rush constructing a HMM, uh, the probability of making errors is getting higher. All right, now we are in the fourth position, right? The third conserve region. We want to move on to the next conserve region. It means that from the fourth one, this region, this position, I want to go to the next one. So I should see what are the uh, probabilities there. In how many cases I can jump from the fourth to the seventh position with no problem. This is a fourth and seventh position here. And in terms of M1 and uh, M2, M3, and M4, what is it? This is M3 to M4. The uh, third conserve region to the fourth conserve region. Okay, in how many cases uh, with no problem I can jump from this conserve region to this one? So you see those ones with the gaps are the ones that actually didn't have any gaps. You could go directly to them. So uh, I mean they didn't have any extra letters like this. So in 60% of cases with no problem you can go from your third conserve region to the fourth one. So what was the percentage? 60%. But what happens in the 40% rest of that? Because it's a probability distribution, I know that 40% of cases, this is a different story now. OK, here I see I have inserted letters. So I should define a new inserted uh, state. So here, 40% of cases. I go to this inserted or insert state. OK, now I should check whether I have a self loop and in how many cases I go from I2 to M4. When I take a look at this one, let me show you in this picture, for example. OK, now we are in the fourth position and we show that in 60% of cases I go to the M4 and 40% I reach the inserted ones. Okay, when I'm in the inserted region, it means that, uh, sorry, not this one, this, uh, this one, this one, and this one, we are not talking about them anymore. Okay, we are not talking about them anymore because they go directly to the uh, conserve region. We are talking about S2 and S4. And we are here now. We are inside this inserted state. In how many cases uh, I go to the conserve region directly? In how many cases uh, I have a self loop? You see, in this one, we didn't have any self loop. We go directly from them to the next one. But here I may have self loop, you see. From C, I have extra letter here, T, one case. Here again, from this G, I go to this one, another case, right? So one plus one, this is two. In two cases, I will have a self loop. But here, from this T, I go to the conserve region. So in one case, I go to the conserve region. From this G, I go directly to the conserve region. So 
In two cases, I had a self-inserted state. In two cases, I could go from the inserted state to the conserved region with no problem. So you see, 2 over 4, 50% of cases. Because 2 plus 2 is 4, all the possibilities. So each one of them, 2 over 4. So 50% of cases, uh, I have a loop. 50% I go directly to the conserved region. So directly going to conserved region 50%. This is 0. And a self loop 50%. Good. Now let's move on. We are in the fourth conserved region. With no problem, I can go to the next one. So the probability should be 1. Again, with no problem, I go to the next one. So the probability should be 1. So the rest of it is pretty easy. 1, 1, 1, because with no problem, we end it anyway. So that's the whole HMM. If you want to check whether you made any mistake or not, you can also uh, construct it from the beginning, which is time consuming, but not a bad idea, because for the midterm exam, you have enough time to construct it again. And also, uh, you can check it fast, at least for the probability distribution, whether there's a problem with that or not. You see, all of them should be equal to 1. The summation of all of them are equal to 1. If you make any mistakes there, then, for example, if you have 90% instead of 1, then that could be problematic. Okay, guys, let me uh, go through your questions. If any, otherwise, I wish you luck for your midterm exam. And if you have any questions, please let me know now.